Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite ships. The Alien Wonder, the Space Crab, the Banu Defender. When the Banu Defender was first announced, I didn't think much of it. I assumed it would be a big bulky fighter, and my preference at the time were more maneuverable and nimble light fighters. When the Q&A came out, my interest was piqued. It definitely sounded like a fighter we had never seen before. Fast forward to 2022, and the Banu Defender has in fact been my daily driver for a while now. Whether running missions, traveling, or doing PvP combat, the Banu Defender is a great ship. First a bit of history. The Banu Defender is made by aliens. No, not those aliens. But you guessed it, the Banu. The Banu Protectorate lacks any sort of military and are not known for being combative. But the Banu Defender is actually purpose-built. What the Banu are known for is hauling cargo goodies across the verse in their beautiful merchantman ships. Soon TM. They lack the capability to fight off wily pirates in large numbers. That's where the Defender comes in. The Banu originally created the Defender to be a dedicated escort ship for the merchantman, keeping it safe and flying side by side as they journey together to exotic destinations to sell their wares. Its design includes technology from a variety of species and has vastly improved range over other fighters of similar size. This is due primarily to a much larger quantum fuel reserve compared to any other ship in its class. Even though it has a size 1 military drive in-game, the added fuel allows the Defender to quantum at the pace and range of a heavy fighter without having to make multiple stops to fill up the tanks. The Defender is also more maneuverable for a fighter of its size. As a defense ship, it needs to be as effective in the atmosphere as it does in space. Its maneuverability increases due to a light hull construction and its use of alien engine technology. The Banner Defender has the utility of a heavy fighter when it comes to traveling, but behaves more like a medium or light fighter when it comes to maneuverability and combat. These are the two primary reasons it makes such a great daily driver. Let's have a closer look at the interior and exterior of the ship, as well as some of the alien technology involved in the construction of the Banu Defender. On the first approach, we immediately notice two large Xeon thrusters prominently displayed on either side of the countermeasure launchers. These engines are what gives the Defender its trademark green engine trails and quantum effects. The engines also give off a very distinctive sound signature that can be heard clearly from within. And looking at the speed, we were able to get 1200 meters per second in space, 23.3 G's tricordering, and just a little over 400 meters per second skimming along the trees of Microtech. The lightweight Oxus composite hull is a matte black charcoal finish shrouded by golden, ornately engraved inlays in select locations. There is a single touch of red highlights on the top as well. There were initial concerns by the community regarding the visibility from the cockpit given the two large crab-like prongs that extend from the hull and in front of the crew. The design is a clever one though and the arms slant slightly downwards to avoid obstruction of the pilot and co-pilot view from the cockpits. The view from either side is slightly off-center as the seating positions are asymmetric but it's something you quickly get used to. The prongs also retract when in the landing position which allows the Banu to take up less space in hangars and pads. The Defender introduced a brand new weapon type to the game called the Tachyon Singe Cannon, although they did come after the ship's initial release. It has four of these size 2 cannons mounted on gimbals, two under the main hull and two at the ends of the arms. In the lore, the Tachyon Cannon is an energy weapon that fires its projectiles at an extremely high velocity making it both very long-ranged and accurate relative to its peers. UEE historians suspect that the Banu assimilated this weapon technology from some other culture. CIG noted in the Q&A that there would be some balancing aspect as a trade-off, but it was yet to be determined at the time. When the Tachyon weapons were first introduced into the game, they were in fact hit-scan weapons with zero bullet travel time. They were also extremely powerful and could two-shot any ship of similar size quite easily. 
Over time, the tachyon damage type was temporarily removed. We'll have to see what CIG does with this weapon type in the future, but from a practicality point of view, you're better off removing them and using some standard size 2 gimbaled or size 3 fixed laser repeaters. I'm partial to the NDB-30s myself, as they keep the same general aesthetic. The Defender also has two size 3 missile racks located under the chin of the hull and comes equipped with four size 2 Ignite infrared missiles. The Defender also boasts a size 2 shield which is rare for a fighter of this size. Its lighter armor and Tavarin based shield is what keeps the fighter light and maneuverable during combat. The Tavarin were masters of shield technology especially for their time. Their phalanx and air shields were far more capable than the shields fielded by the United Planets of Earth during the Tavarin War. The Defender comes equipped with a Sukuron shield, which in lore is manufactured by the Banu Suli based and improved upon Tavarin technology. Its description describes an efficient power design which draws less power while still absorbing most ballistic and energy attacks until it's fully depleted. The trade-off being slower regen and longer downstates. Even though the Sukuron's efficient design draws less power, it is still a size 2 shield and in addition to the Xion propulsion system and tachyon weaponry, the Defender requires a dual power plant setup to compensate for the overall power draw. It comes equipped with two size 1 ion burst civilian grade B power plants as well as two polar military grade B coolers to keep things cool and juicy. It also should be said that as of 316, all shields have been flatlined to practically the same specs and as such, the Sukaron has temporarily lost its specific abilities for the time being. The only entrance to the ship is via the front ramp. Internally, the Banner Defender is very unique with its alien design and has an organic yet artistic look to it. It's a mash of technology meets nature and art. The main structural supports mimic sculpted wood carvings. The engines and components are protected by cascading spinal shutters. The doors and shutters are molded into the walls to create a smooth, seamless aesthetic while still providing operator access. Venting and grills peek through above with dim blue lighting highlighting throughout. There is a good amount of space inside the hull to store boxes and it allows easy access to components if repairs are required. Although it should be noted that there is no cargo grid. There are also two weapon racks internally for rifle storage. The Defender is also a multi-crew vessel and has the added benefit of an optional co-pilot seat that can currently act as a pilot seat as well. So you can fly from the right or left perspective if you wish and both are equipped with ejection systems. And unlike other light or medium fighters, it also has two crew beds, allowing you and your co-pilot to camp in the hall when required. And for those citizens looking to purchase the Banu Defender for themselves, it can be purchased in-game for the small sum of 2,781,000 credits. Just head over to the Area 18 Astro Armada ship shop and pick up yours today. I hope you found this review of the Banu Defender entertaining and helpful. It's one of the most unique ships we currently have in the game, and it's definitely one of my favorites. If you would like to see more ship reviews, please let me know in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe to stay updated on future content. And as always, thanks for watching.